Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver and I am the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet. I am a board certified medical physician, medical doctor. I am a board certified obstetrician gynecologist and I am also certified in culinary medicine from Tulane University. I am coming to you today to talk to you about hormones, menopause, and weight gain. <laughs> I get this question a lot and I have actually, it's so complex and it's so multidimensional. I've been doing tons of research on this and it all kind of feeds together with what I already preach. But, you know, I wanted to specifically today just touch on if those of you who are going through the menopause transition and feeling a little crazy that there's something wrong with you and you don't understand it and no one seems to be able to explain why, I want to give you a little bit of clarity as to what is going on with our bodies at this age. Um, I'm going to walk over here and let my dog out who's crying. <laughs> All right, Rex, there you go, buddy. Good boy. Sorry. Real life here. I'm at my house. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, so what's happening? So if you, t I'm gonna give you some scary, scary statistics first. Um, this is coming from uh, the, it's a menopause review. It's called Obesity and Menopause, Our Negligence or an Unfortunate Inevitability. So if you take a woman who is normal weight and considers herself to be pretty healthy and you you take her through that seven to 10 year menopause transition process from you know stone cold normal to going through the process which takes seven years on average, all the way to the end, you spit her out at the end where her ovaries are shut down and she's got nothing. If she does not change the quality of her nutrition, how, how and where and when she's moving her, her exercise, if she keeps everything the same, even though she was normal weight and completely healthy before, here's what's going to happen at the end. She will gain weight. She will replace muscle with fat, and it's going to go into places she's never had it before. She's going to take that peripheral fat, and there will be a change from what's on her hips and thighs and shifting to more of belly fat or the fat deposit and or the fat deposited around your visceral organs. Okay, That fat is dangerous. The, the subcutaneous fat is cosmetically distressing, but it's not that dangerous other than it can be harmful to our you know, arthritis, hurts your hips and knees if you have a lot of it. But it doesn't create an inflammatory environment like the visceral fat does. So what, what happens to us? You know, so definitely, you know, there's, there's Newton's law of thermodynamics. Calories in is calories out. And that, by and large, has a lot of truth to it. And actually, it was what I was taught in medical school. It's all I was ever taught. But modern obesity research is proving that that is just not actually the answer. When you look at people who try as hard as they can, all the willpower in the world, and they calorically restrict, it is not enough for them to maintain weight. Um, or them to lose weight. Now, when you're younger, actually calories in, calories out works pretty well. I did it for years and it was great. Um, however, when we start throwing in the gut hormone changes, the visceral fat, the hormone changes, suddenly these hormones are playing more of a factor. Hormones determine where you store fat, how you store fat, when you break it down, and it, hormones also drive our hunger and our society. That has nothing to do with calories, nothing. So I want everybody to understand that there's a huge emotional, physiological, biochemical part of where and how and how much fat we store that is hormone driven. And when as women, and I'm talking to specifically women here who are roughly my age, I'm 52 years old. When we go through these menopause changes, those things get compounded. So scary statistics time. So this is um, from a menopause journal, Obesity and Menopause. Um, it's a Polish journal, but it was translated into English and it's phenomenal. Um, so when you look at women in the U.S., okay, menopause is defined as, um, okay, the prevalence, here we go, the incidence of obesity in the United States among women from 40 to 65 years old is calculated as 65% of us. 
that is a dramatic increase from premenopause. Then for women over the age of 65, it's as high as 74%. Three fourths of us are morbidly obese at the end of menopause. And many, 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 many of those women were normal weight before, or close to normal weight. We see an average weight gain of 15 pounds through the menopause transition. That is not willpower. That is not calories in, calories out. That is your body, your metabolism, your hormones are changing. So one of the things I want to do is educate you, you know, through the Galveston Diet, my program and everything, is, you know, what's happening to your body so you understand. You're not crazy. This is real. Um, what those changes mean to you and what you can do nutritionally to hack those things, to try to get your best outcome so you don't end up as one of those statistics. And it's very, very doable. I've got 42,000 students enrolled in the program now and they're killing it, okay? Um, so we look at, there's two kind of, two areas of hormones that you need to focus on. One affects everybody at every age at all times, but it does tend to ramp up as we age with the aging process alone. That is insulin, that is cortisol, that is leptin, that is ghrelin, then some other hormones like cholecystokinin, neuropeptide Y. There's several, there's about eight or nine that I do a deep dive into um, in, the, in the hormone research that I've been doing. So, but the two biggest ones you need to think about are, are or the four are insulin, cortisol, um, leptin, and ghrelin. So insulin is what drives the glucose to be shifted and stored as fat. Um, it also helps control hunger. It helps control satiety. And the incidence of insulin resistance in this country is huge. Several of you I know out there have been diagnosed with borderline diabetes or insulin resistance, and there's definitely a huge nutritional component to that. So instead of just counting calories in, calories out in the Galveston diet, we set our calories at a, somewhere around 1,500 a day, so a little less some days. Um, we focus on the quality of the nutrition you're eating. We focus on macronutrients. We focus on micronutrients. We focus on the things that are going to improve our insulin resistance through nutrition. We focus on the things that are gonna lower our cortisol levels through nutrition and exercise and meditation and stress relief. We also looked at, you know, we do a really deep dive into leptin and ghrelin. So leptin is created in fat cells and it is the hormone that tells your brain you're full, stop eating. That system is broken in a lot of us and it gets way more broken as we gain weight and get more of this visceral fat. Um, so you never get the signal to stop eating. It drives you to eat. No amount of willpower can overcome an evolutionary drive. Yeah, you can starve yourself, but you are, you know, being manipulated by these hormones. And my job, my goal is to make sure your calories are where they need to be, of course, you know, so you're not starving, but really to educate you as to what, what we've been missing all these years, the quality of the food looking at a hard dive in macronutrients. Not all carbs are created equal. You've got to, you know, complex carbohydrates, legumes, whole grains, that's the way to go. Getting rid of the simple sugars, getting rid of the things that are so, so, so addictive and do nothing but drive fat to your viscera, drive you to get more belly fat and make all of the things that aging is doing to us worse. So you end up in this vicious, vicious cycle. My job, my goal is to break the cycle. So I invite you to break up with calories. Think differently. Think about the quality of the food. Think that you are hacking your own hormones to make them work better for you. Because as women at our age, we have the gut hormones, what I talked about. Now we're gonna talk about estrogen and what's going on with that. So in the perimenopausal period, and give me a thumbs up or a wave if you guys are there right now. <laughs> so um, our, it's like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. We have dramatic fluctuations of estrogen 
and along with that, with our androgens, which are androgen dione and testosterone. We have a little bit of that, way more than men. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. Okay, so through the perimenopausal period, all of a sudden we kind of had a steady state. We had little fluctuations throughout the month, normal cycle stuff. And then we go through perimenopause and it's like, woo, whoosh, woo, whoosh, woo, whoosh. And our brain is like, whoa, what's going on? It can't figure out what's happening. So you start having hot flashes. You start having lots of metabolic changes. You start having more brain fog. You know, risks are going up. So then as we end, as the estrogen levels start really, really dropping, your brain is like, whoa, where'd the estrogen go? We need more. It's programmed to do that. So it creates a hormone in the hypothalamus called follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. These are the hormones that are supposed to tell the ovaries, get busy. But our ovaries die, okay? Our ovaries have shut down. They're not doing anything. So it goes, those, those FSH and LH, follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, say, hey, anybody else out there in the body, we need estrogen. So the adrenals get stimulated a little bit. Other parts of your body get stimulated. And we have a relative rise in our androgens, okay, in our male hormones. There, it's not a huge rise, not like a man's level, but we have a relative rise and there's no estrogen on board to counterbalance it. So estrogen is, or, or very little estrogen comparatively. Estrogen is what drives the fat deposition in our hips and thighs. That is called gynoid fat distribution is what makes a woman kind of curvy and look like a woman. We shift some of that fat over to the viscera and to our abdomen, inflammation levels start skyrocketing and you start getting into the vicious cycle. The relative rise of androgens, which is unopposed with estrogen, so we have this, this androstene dione testosterone ab abundance we're not used to, leads to lots of things. Increase, that's when a woman's risk of cardiovascular disease approaches a man. That's when we see her starting getting visceral fat and belly fat where she never ever had it before. Um, that that, sorry, I had a call. I thought I had it on sleep, but whatever. Um, um, that is what is driving this. So you end up in this male-like pattern of hypertension, heart disease, metabolic disease, all of it, which makes us really, really ill. So when they look at weight gain in a woman in perimenopause and postmenopause, they can actually break down, they put people through the densiometers and they can measure how much hip fat, you know, um, hip and thigh fat versus visceral fat. So a woman who's gaining this weight through menopause will gain some in her hips and thighs again, but will have a much greater gain in the visceral fat where she never had it before. And that's what I'm focusing on. That's what I'm trying to bring down to get you out of this vicious cycle, to break the inflammation cycle because that visceral fat is inflammatory. That visceral fat creates cytokines, not the fat on your hips and thighs, the fat in your abdomen. That visceral fat is linked to all the disease states, hypertension, heart disease, relative risk of cancer increase, all of it, all of it, all of it. We can start to reverse some of this with good nutrition, exercise, and stress reduction. It can happen. It's happening. It's happening with our students. They're going to the doctor. Their labs are amazing. Their weight's down. They're getting, you know, high fives and woohoos at the doctor's office. And they're like, hey, you must have had a major nutritional change. And we're like, actually, I did. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's all very, very, very doable. So whether or not a woman should go on hormone replacement therapy, here's some important news. If you're gonna do it, one, it's an individual discussion with your doctor, okay? It's not a one size fits all. You have your own genetics. You have your own environmental factors. You have your own health where you are right now. It's a risk benefit ratio. But if you're gonna do it, you need to do it sooner rather than later. If you start hormone replacement therapy older, once you're already through menopause, it's not helpful and it might even hurt. So. If you're going to consider hormone replacement therapy because your ovaries have shut down or been surgically removed, go talk to your doctor, but you need to do it sooner, like in your 40s. Don't wait until you're postmenopause because the sooner you get started, you actually, when they look at women who are on HRT, hormone replacement therapy, um, 
through the perimenopause and then look at their visceral fat and look at their body fat, they actually do better. They don't have as much inflammatory markers in their blood. Their weight is a lot more stable. They don't have the obesity levels. So I'm not saying it's for everyone. There are women who absolutely should never take a hormone as long as they live, but it's something to think about. So um, anyway, that combined, and but don't leave nutrition out of the <laughs> nutrition and exercise. You've got to be doing weight bearing exercise to keep the musculoskeletal unit small because what else is going on? We're losing our muscle. We're losing our metabolism. Just with age, a woman will lose 5% of her metabolic rate per decade. Guys, it's all working against us. We really weren't meant to live this long. We've artificially extended our lifespans. But so you got to like, you got to go in big. You got to go big or go home if you want to be, if you want to age well. If you want to be healthy as you age, enjoy your life, enjoy your grandchildren, enjoy, you know, your relationships and not be feeling poorly, not dragging this extra weight around, not be on all this medication. It's doable. It's very, very doable, but you need a sound nutritional program. And that is what I feel like my purpose in this world is at 52 years old, is to educate people as to the best nutritional profile for us. Y'all are just like me, a woman in midlife who's just... Okay, guys, I'm getting multiple calls. I got to go. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this and um, you learned something. Take care.